Our next speaker is Sanjay Mazumda. Uh, he's from the University of Adelaide and the University of New South Wales. Welcome, Sanjay. Thank you, Stacey. Um, how cool is that? They've got a video. I'm a bit jealous. But, um, um, so welcome, everyone. I'm, I'm going to give you a bit of a, a whirlwind tour of, of the Defence Trailblazer and, um, and specifically about the Defence Space theme within the Defence Trailblazer. But what I thought I'd do is start off with a bit about the big picture. Um, so you've probably all heard that Australia is great at research. We, we sort of bat above our weight. We sort of rated A, A plus in a lot of different areas, things like machine learning, quantum computing, um, satcom, etc. So we're really good at the research. But where we fall down, where we're, frankly, we're pretty crap, is around the translation of that research, the commercialization of that research into real products and solutions that end up in the hands, in my case, in the hands of, of the warfighter. And we'd say we're probably about a C or a C plus in that area. So the tr Trailblazer program, the Trailblazer University program was really established to help bridge that valley of death, the de valley of death between the lab and the field. Now, coupled with that, more recently, we've had the Defence Strategic Review um, just launched last, the public version was launched last week. And in the Defence Strategic Review, one of the things that was highlighted is that we need to get defence technologies from the lab to the field and into the hands of the warfighter so we can, we can have a, what they call an asymmetric uh, impact, asymmetric effect uh, against our, our, um, our enemies. So this leads us to the vision for the Defence Trailblazer, which is all about accelerating the delivery of sovereign capabilities to the Australian Defence Force. And we're going to achieve that really in two ways. One of them is to, by actually doing so we're actually going to do R&D at that pointy end where we translate the research from the lab to the field and into operations, into the hands of the warfighter. So we, we will work, the universities will work closely with our industry partners and with Defence to do that research translation. The second way we're going to achieve this is really through helping to upskill the workforce so that they are more accustomed, and industry, so they're more accustomed to working with each other to really to address that value of death. So not only are we going to skill the workforce of today, but we're going to help shape the workforce of tomorrow. And we're going to do that by bringing together defence, industry and academia. Just by way of numbers, uh, we're a $240 million collaboration uh, between over 50 industry party, uh, partners, um, of which around 39 are SMEs, and many of them are in this room today. So we have a large cohort of industry partners who are really driving the R&D work uh, that occurs. We have Defence as a key stakeholder in, in, our, um, in our consortium, otherwise it wouldn't be called the Defence Trailblazer, um, and they're really shaping the priorities in which we should focus our R&D efforts. Um, and then we have our two key university partners, University of Adelaide and UNSW, the University of New South Wales. So some total of their contribution is, is over $240 million. That includes a federal government grant through the Department of Education. Now we're structured into two streams of activity. One, one stream is called Workforce Innovation Culture, and it basically does what's on the label. It's focusing on the workforce side of things. It's focusing on driving that innovative culture, and it's focusing on the systemic cultural change required to deliver that um, agenda that I spoke about. The second um, stream of activity is our R&D program. And you'll see up there, there are uh, five thematic areas with a six you know, um, bucket there to allow us for other technologies. And those five thematic areas, things like hi uh, defense hypersonics and countermeasures, robotics, autonomous systems and AI, um, cyber and information warfare, um, quantum technologies, um, and defence space technologies are all very much aligned to the areas of priority for defence and particularly aligned to AUKUS pillar to the advanced technology areas. So I'm going I'm to focus a bit on the defence space technology area. Um, and essentially what we're looking to do is to develop a flagship mission. And that flagship mission will uh, enable us to really road test technologies that are being developed by our industry partners and, and enhance with our research from, with academia. 
We're going to demonstrate novel space-borne capabilities that are aligned to defence priority needs. And we're going to build that collaboration between primes, SMEs, academia, and broadly with defence. And through doing that, we're going to upskill. And that's really going to be a key part, and you've heard that from the other trailblazers as well. Skilling is a key part of what we do. Um, we had a workshop at the last space forum, and breakfast at the last space forum, and we asked our partners, you know, what, what does good look like from you? And you, you won't be able to read those um, boxes, but we did a bit of a vox pop. And essentially, one of the key things that, that was drawn out was that we really need to focus on helping to build a platform. So we're going to be leveraging the, the deep capabilities that exist within UNSW Canberra, uh, the space team, um, head, headed up by uh, Professor Russell Boyce, um, and, and their pedigree and their heritage around the M2 program to really help to build that platform. But it's more than just the platform. It's, it's all the capabilities that go on the platform, the, the payloads and sensors that will really be key to the, what we do. There's a shopping list of technologies here that, that our, our partners highlighted as being important. Um, and through the, through the process of scoping up our key activities, we'll refine those and, and prioritise those, um, working in conjunction with defence and industry on that. Um, but there's things like you know, edge computing, edge AI, uh, onboard uh, AI, etc., cetera, um, as well as looking at things like you know, quantum comms and, and things like that. The main thing is we've got to target what we do to the priority needs within defence. And there's a, a, there's a number listed there. What we need to do is to work more closely with, with defence writ large, but obviously um, Defence Space Command, to really um, hone in on the ones that are going to be critically important. And it's the usual suspects, things like space domain awareness, um, including space-based uh, space um, space surveillance. Um, space ISR and a whole bunch of other areas. So as I colloquially describe it, we're going to be looking up, looking down and looking sideways and trying to work out what's going on. So where are we at the moment? Um, firstly, what we're trying to do is finalise all our industry commitments and, and areas of interest, etc. Um, these are, as you saw, $240 million, 50 partners. These are big beasts. Um, and trying to get everyone to, to sign up to it takes a bit of time, but we, we, we're on the home straight there. Um, key thing we've got to do is really work with defence and our industry partners and our research partners to identify what, what it is that we're going to focus our, our efforts on. So we have a broad, broad thematic roadmap, roadmap, but what we want to do is hone that in onto the specific projects and activities. Um, what we will do is leverage the uh, concurrent design facility that exists at uh, UNSW Canberra to really help with that process of, of prioritising and refining. So that's a, a real whirlwind tour of Defence Trailblazer, the Defence Space theme within Trailblazer, and we're hoping by working with our industry partners, working with our academic partners and working by Defence, we can help Trailblaze some new capabilities into the hands of, of the ADF. Thank you.